uh, and so for me, um, my, one of my major skill sets is curiosity. I'm endlessly, endlessly curious. And I can get, go down a rabbit hole of curiosity. And that's where the project began, uh, just with random curiosity. I'm a science geek. Um, and uh, from way back, and so I'm always interested in things. And, uh, and I saw a video of a sand pendulum. And that mm. got me very excited. And uh, so you'll be seeing a sand pendulum, but I'll explain what a sand, pe sand pendulum is. Um, basically, it's just a weight. Um, I have a really, uh, this is my test version that I did. Like I made one. Beautiful. So it, it's a pop bottle with a string on it. And then the string and it just, uh, you know, does this. And, and you think uh, going back and forth, or it, it, there's two options if you let it go back and forth, it's, it's a pendulum, but if you swing it, it'll swing around. And, um, and the swinging around uh, has this beautiful pattern. It's extraordinary. It looks like my days, you know, as a kid with a spiral, spiral, spiral around. So the sand that's falling from the pendulum creates the pattern. pattern yeah, and, it, and so uh, I saw this uh, video of this guy doing this one, it was science talking about patterns and stuff. And uh, I, I went, I said, I could do that. And um, so I did that and I just found this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pattern. And I did it in my basement. I had a, like a seven foot ceiling. So it kind of lasted about a minute and a half, two minutes. And I went, ah, that's really beautiful. And then uh, the sand just kept on piling on top of each other. So you really couldn't see the pattern anymore. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting, but it's, you know, two and a half minutes. And, and so I did a bunch of them. I'm just already fascinated with it. And then one time as I did it, uh, something happened. So I had to, I was so quick, quickly went going. So I just quickly let it go on and I shut the light off and I walked out and I have a, in the hallway, I have this little foot light on the ground and that had a shaft of light that hit the sand pendulum. And I could still see detail because now the sand wasn't just what was happening, but it was the relief pattern of it. And I went, oh, oh if you yeah. light from ground, you can see this beautiful, beautiful pattern. And so then I just quickly went back and carried on watching it. And then I brought a little more powerful out light and then it lasted for 15 minutes. And I went, wow, okay, that's, that's really, really interesting. And then I got obsessed with different things you could do with it. And uh, as typical pendulum is, is, is just one swing. And what I love about it, it is, uh, it's, you know, pendulum swings. And, um, and it, it's, it, the, it's like the period of a, of a pendulum is based on the length of the arm. So that's why all grandfather clocks you will see are 33 inches long, every single one of them. Um, and there's a little weight there uh, that you can move up and down to test it, to change it based on your altitude. Because if you're for higher altitude, uh, gravity is slightly less. So this is at, you know, grandfather clock at sea level at the equator is exactly 33 and whatever inches. And after that, it always changes. And I thought, wow, that's, I got obsessed with the science of that and figured out that. Anyways, it's uh, very and then. mathematical, Gary. Oh, yes, yes, and it is. That, yeah, very scientific. Yeah, yeah, wow. And I got lost with the science of it. And um and the pattern, and then um, I found out that you could do a double pendulum with it, uh, like a pendulum at the top here that would do it, like a double one that would go back and forth, like a swing, and then another one below it. And uh, the ratio between those two became really extraordinary. Then you saw extraordinarily complex, like very, very, very complex shapes. And then I went, oh, wow, this is something else. And I could, I, I did the one and I would just like stare and look at it for like 15 minutes, just be mesmerized. Um, and, um, and so I thought that this could be something I could create a piece with. And I worked at the Empty Space Theater and two of my colleagues, uh, Pam Patel, who's uh, the artistic director of the Empty Space, and Bob Bardish, one of our um, cast, camp company members, both are opera singers as well as theater people and writers, and, you know, multidisciplinary artists themselves, right? And so I thought, well, it'd be great if they could sing while this is happening and create a musical scape. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, involved uh, Nick Storing, who's um, a multi-instrumentalist, uh, and he loved this idea. And so he brought his computer uh, sequencer, and then he uh, recorded their voices. And so then he said, I'm gonna create with them, but I'm not gonna add any other instruments other than their voices and processing their voices. So he wow. actually, so in the piece we'll see today, it's Pam and both singing, but Nick is actually taking their voices and manipulating them. And so every sound you hear is just either the sound of the sand pushing, like falling down, or Pam and Bo's voices, and that's the only sounds. Oh here. my goodness. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. So now we're going to, uh, Pam and Bo are both going to join us after okay. we watch the, the actual performance. So I'm excited to uh, hear from them as well. Yeah. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about what we are going to see in this yeah. video. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, so what I did, I rigged up my basement. So I have a sand, uh, like a pendulum in my basement. I mean, my, in my living room. And, uh, pendulum in the basement. Pendulum. Yeah, my pendulum. <laughs> so pendulum maybe. And then I... I, I so geeky, Gary. Other yeah, I am so... Like really secretive. Oh, you know, no. Gary's got a pendulum in his, in basement. his basement. Yeah, that's, that's it. I, 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 can, it. I can show you my etchings and my pendulums, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so th this pendulum in that I set up and I, I, I played around for a while with the different variables of the uh, refer the ratio between the two pendulums because that creates the frequency. Uh, it's, called, it's called a Lissajou pattern and that's often when you see, um, you ever seen those old black movies and they have this squiggly line that's doing something, that's reading something? That's usually two different uh, vibrations coming together and two vibrations coming together create stuff like electronics and you know, tubes and all that kind of stuff. A lot of electronics come from two frequencies coming into each other. And a lot of patterns and everything comes from the juxtaposition of two patterns. So what you will see is the, the very extreme ratio with this small pendulum that moves back like this um, and a longer one. So the ratio between the two is something like um, uh, 18 to one or something. And so as a result, it takes two minutes for the pattern to create itself. So every two minutes, the pattern will repeat exactly. And the only difference is it gets a little smaller. And the only reason it's getting smaller is because we're, we're not in a vacuum. So the resistance of the air is basically it. I'm pushing it and you'll see the shape that's created by my energy of pushing it. The pendulum ratio will create the other uh, parts of the uh, shape. And then atmospheric pressure slow it down if there was in a vacuum it would go theoretically forever um minus the next step the next step yeah the how long step. can i make the next step is to make it go on forever make a vacuum yeah make a vacuum <laughs> and actually actually and the one other thing actually that is also part of the pattern is the rotation of the earth um because if you had a, a right. pendulum if you have a pendulum a single pendulum just going back and forth uh, it will keep from going back and forth as the earth rotates. The earth will rotate and it'll go on like this. So it looks like it is changing as it goes around, but actually it is the rotation of the earth. And that's, um, and so this, you know, Fulcrum's uh, famous um, yeah. pendulum proved that the earth was rot rotating. And you can actually tell what latitude you are by how much it rotates. Isn't it amazing? And, it was, and it's like most people don't realize just how fast the Earth is rotating, oh, right? Like, yeah, ridiculously fast. And, and, and so, just yeah. how immediate the impact of that could be. Yeah, and you think we're going along with it, but we're not quite along with it. We're, there's, we'll, we still want to stay still. It's moving. We kind of still want to stay still. So there, there's, there's a certain amount of ourselves still not quite moving with it. You know, you, you, you're, you're, you know, it's a small, minuscule amount of energy, but you can see it when you do something long term, like a pendulum going back and forth. And That's what you amazing. will see with the double pendulum is that it, it first starts off going clockwise. It'll reduce and go almost to a straight line and then go counterclockwise, clockwise and counterclockwise. And it's not about mm -hmm. like sometimes if you twist something, it goes clockwise and then clockwise and that. This is not about that. This is about the difference between the two frequencies. And that shape will continue. So if you want to watch it, every two minutes, the, the shape will, two minutes and actually eight seconds. But two minutes and eight seconds, the shape will then repeat itself and go on and smaller, smaller, smaller. And what Pam and Bo are doing is actually creating a soundscape based on the shape that's happening. And they were talking, we were talking about, well, what do you think this is? And they think it was a, a life of a human being. So this person that starts off to the first sounds is very, very simple, almost childlike uh, breathing sounds, very simple. And it goes, goes, goes more and more and more and more complex as they go along to it gets quite complex musically and then goes simply. And at the end, you'll see an, uh, an eye actually. All the shapes that changes because actually at one point, the sand builds up to the point that actually the pendulum starts hitting the, the sand. And that's another, this is another change in actually the shape that's creating because the sand is now rising up to the pendulum and it's now slowing the pendulum down again. And so this other shape, which is this eye, and you'll see this sort of eye closing and another eye opening. It's really quite beautiful, which just happened in front of us. And Pam and Bo responded musically to that. And so that's some of the things you'll see. And Nick Storing, our musician, has taken all those voices and echoes it and repeats it back upon each other. So that there's is a lot amazing. to watch. But I suggest, I suggest it's really, it takes a long time. So really zen yourself out and just enjoy how slowly and you can get lost in the music or lost in the visual.
Wow. I, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I feel like I'm coming out of almost like a trance state. Gary, if you wouldn't mind uh, joining me, and I'm going to ask uh, Bo and Pam to join us as well. Holy smokes. Um, I feel, I feel, I don't know. I feel uh, like at once, like refreshed, almost like, like, as it is, it's so it's like meditative almost but um but also like it just sucks you right in right so oh i feel like i have like shivers and um but i also feel sort of refreshed by it is that weird i don't know welcome pam welcome Bo. um i'm just so delighted that you could join us for this conversation tonight because i am super curious about the creation of this piece this this really spectacular piece and uh, I, I really want to learn more about that so obviously originally this was supposed to be a live in-person event in the lobby of our Queen Square uh, location with big high ceilings and and things were gonna look very very different uh, you know and and then you know a pandemic happened no big deal and then we had to, you, you know, you had to come up with a, another plan. So, oh my gosh, tell me about that. Who wants to start? Pam, tell us. Something. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had spoken about the project and uh, Gary was sharing, you know, that he was working, he was, he was experimenting with this idea of the pendulum and he kept saying, you know, I want you and Bo involved, I want you and Bo involved when the time is right kind of thing. And then the timing felt pretty right. So we thought earlier this year. <laughs> and we- I know, but Pam, you have to be honest with me. When Gary first, I mean, I know you two have known each other for a really long time and have collaborated lots. So when Gary was like, I'm experimenting with pendulums, were you like, what? Or were you like, oh yeah, that seems totally like with you. Yeah, kind of like, okay, like you just let me know. I'm, I'll be there. I mean, I'm kind of known for that too, right? Like I'm, I'm kind of just known, are, especially yeah. amongst my musician friends of like, yeah, Pam is just dead, whatever. You just give her, give her the time and the place and she'll be there and she'll just improvise, you know? So <laughs> that's what we did. You know, Excellent. Gary has with the larger pendulum set up. Uh, yeah, I'm, it says my internet connection's unstable, so just let yes, me know if are... anything. Yeah, I will let you know. Yeah, we're, we, uh, you're freezing a little bit on us, but that's okay. I, so far, I think we've caught everything you were saying. Yeah, um, we, we were able to be in a studio with a, a prototype of a smaller version of a pendulum, which still pretty much took up, took up a good, like, I, I'd say, quarter of the room. Uh, this large room we were in and um, we had an opportunity to build a relationship with that pendulum. Bo and I had an opportunity to build a relationship with each other and we just started to improvise uh, with our voices, with our movement in the space, with our proximity to the pendulum and also with the sand itself. There was this whole mm -hmm. uh, sort of epilogue at the end actually where we we had, we had played with the sand, we took up the sand, we create, we spread it, we created almost like, um, it felt like burial grounds, you know, because it, it just felt very ritualistic. So that was the direction we were heading in. And then, yeah, pandemic happened. <laughs> so you did get to start in person, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, we had this opportunity, amazing opportunity with ID Exchange during this time 
So one of the first conversations I think we had was, okay, how do we do this in a way where the technology doesn't drive us bananas? Um, it still did drive us bananas. <laughs> I <laughs> but this is where we imagine landed. because it, like I'm thinking even uh, anybody who sat through a Zoom meeting knows like uh, that the timing is slightly off and things are just don't quite align. Bo, I'm wondering if you can comment on just, uh, I think you're muted there, but um, if you could just talk a little bit about that sort of timing and because, you know, starting off in person, having that, that physical relationship to both the space and the sand and to the other collaborators, but then kind of being disjointed and the timing of things. Yeah, um, I think it really helps that Pam and I and Gary and I have been working together for so many years. So we know each other really, really well. Um, and uh, improv with Pam is one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world. So we've done it on several gigs now and, uh, and it's a wonderful experience every time. I'm really glad we had space and time in the room all together. Um, it's always so wonderful working with Nick because he always captures really amazing things and is able to feed back to us that feeds us then. Um, so that's always an amazing experience. Um, but for me, like for, for the setup for this recording, I had five devices um, because I was watching Gary's video. I, Pam and I were on a phone call, an actual analog phone call so that there wouldn't be lag. We were on a separate oh. Zoom. Yeah, we were on a separate Zoom meeting with everybody. <laughs> And then we, uh, we had an external mic recording the sound. And so, and Gary was recording on the Zoom. So, and then Nick was also recording the phone call it's, it's separately from everything else. So I was teched, teched out. I was just like, I'm used to just showing up and singing. And so the whole <laughs> technological aspect oh, of Nick, this, a whole new world. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole new world. It's really uncomfortable. And uh, so I'm really grateful for everyone for making it feel a little less daunting. But it's really, and even listening to it now, it's like hearing it over the Zoom speaker. It's, it, there's a certain sound that is happening in our meetings right now. And uh, my heart and my ears are really missing analog sound, <laughs> you know, acoustical sound. Like it's just, just one of those things. So it was an interesting thing to hear what Nick did with our recordings um, and how he was able to manipulate it at all. But it was, it, it was quite the, uh, the experience and so much fun working with my favorite people. Um, and yeah, and anytime Gary says, says, hey, Bo, I'm like, yes, I'm in. Come to my email from Gary saying, hey, Bo, how's it going? I'm like, yep, yep, just sign me up, whatever. <laughs> it's always going to be a fun experience. Whatever crazy thing you've cooked up, Gary, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. Amazing. Well, and uh, Nick was obviously uh, really integral to the creative piece as well. And so Gary, who was in charge with that? Were you and Nick collaborating on all those like crazy tech pieces then? Or who was responsible for that, for, that, for the technical uh, aspects? Well, the technical thing we all talked about and then Nick made sure everybody had a Zoom or a good audio recording so that the audio recording was mm -hmm. separate and I wanted a pretty good video recording which thank goodness now phones are really good so uh, and we're they're pretty small as well so uh, I had high res actually <laughs> Pam sent me a, her video and it was like a gig and so I said your her video of her <laughs> picture was higher does res that than, it was, it, does that mean it was like really little or really big huge huge yeah huge, huge gig <laughs> huge gig a gig a gig back in the DV times is like a 45 minutes of DVD. <laughs> Thank you for the translation. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that. so, so that's a I'm lot, very like, too. yeah, that's a lot of information in a thing that's that big, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is great for me though, because I, because uh, I had to put it all together. And so Nick was, was in charge of uh, simulating all the sound. And so all of the sounds you heard, Nick took the recordings of Bo and, and, and Pam together and then just looped that. He sprung it up uh, like four or five octaves to make it those bell sounds. It's just their voices. That droney sound is just their voices as well. So it was quite, quite, quite beautiful. And then sometimes he just pulled it out entirely and then pulled it back in again. So it really felt the echoes and all that was just great. So yeah, Nick was in charge of making sure that he got clear sound and from there was like small, uh, like a Zoom recorder, which is a recording uh, for, the, uh, for the pieces. And uh, yeah, and then collaboration, it was just in the room. Everybody knows, we all know each other really well. And we all know that just put the people in the room and then just figure out what happens. And so, yeah, the big part was the cleaning up at the end, which is them sweeping it up, 
which is very beautiful. So I actually got some really beautiful Japanese handcrafted <laughs> broom and shovel <laughs> to, that they were going to make it even more ritualistic. But we felt like earlier on, this was um, uh, like because of the, the meditative sense of it. It was sort of similar to this death ritual of some sort that we don't tend to have in Western society. We, you know, a funeral is shopped out to people that we've met for the first time, and the person tells us how to do the uh, funeral at the funeral parlor, and it's very sterile for the most part, and you really have to fight to humanize it. Um, so, uh, uh, so in that sense, I thought, well. This would be a great death ritual. Actually, honestly, I'm not joking. When I die, I want my ashes put in the pendulum and <laughs> scattered out at the end. That's how I'm going to do it. Uh, uh, that makes sense to me. Yeah. With your friends creating a soundscape see, around and then, you. And then just see my I ashes. I actually can't really think of a better way to go, to be honest. That sounds So it's out there marketing. If anybody, if anybody wants it, I can, <laughs> I can do your death ritual. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I think and so I would also want to thank, by the way, thank so much Idea Exchange for helping supporting us for this. Um, and the uh, Water Regional Arts Council also gave us uh, funding to do this. And we were able to rehearse at the uh, Cambridge Center of the Arts. And so we are great partners. And the Empty Space, obviously, who is now uh, co-producing, which is really just a huge part to make us able to do this. Because it's this is a piece that uh, I mean, technically there's not a lot, you know, sand and things, but it, it's it's the power, it's the giving time for the human beings, people to be in the room to work together is essential. And so this is time heavy people <laughs> like theater. Most of your uh, most of your expenses are just getting the people in the room. And oh, we for had a, sure. We had about four several sessions, four or five sessions together to play. And, That's um, amazing, and yeah. it's it's so nice when you have a team that it, where that a trust was had already been built in order to kind of um, and then scaffold the the action that then happened together, yeah. right? Um, I'm just thinking about in terms of myself, I can get in front of a crowd of oh I don't know a lot of people and be fine talking. But put me in front of a camera and I, I feel like I become like a weird like caricature of myself or something. I don't know what it is that happens to me. Um, so I wondered, you know, Pam and Bo, uh, maybe we'll go uh, Bo first and then Pam, but I want to hear both of your thoughts about uh, you know, is that sort of, are you used to being um, recorded in that way? I know both of you have been in, in, in lots of productions and, and things, but in that way and was there a difference to you like what were some of the differences in your mind to uh more of a live performance versus this sort of recorded one um for me i i try to avoid being doing on camera work as much as possible um i really do change with with uh with audiences and with collaborators um and, uh, and so for me, there was sadness in the process because this was a makeup for not being able to get together. Yeah. Um, but but within, within that then, I was able to discover nuances and, uh, and, uh, and possibilities that live performance doesn't offer. So mm. it was an interesting learning curve for me personally. Um, like I said, with the technological thing was overwhelming at first and, and all of that, but but more so in the technique and in the sounds that we were able to use, I think um, uh, it, it opened up my palette a lot, actually. Mm. So it was, uh, Isn't that interesting? New opportunities and sure. uh, yeah, oh, that's cool. And, 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 and the level of trust that is between us with Pam and with Gary and um, that, that plays a huge role in where I, I feel comfortable going vocally and, and energetically when we were experimenting. Um, so I do look forward to revisiting this piece when we're able to be in the same room and, and working on the final bits of, of finishing the ritual together. Um, that was a huge part for me as a performer, as a, but, but this was an amazing experience um, in its own right, yeah. Oh, cool. How about you, Pam? Yeah, I mean, I have done uh, some film work before, so that wasn't, that wasn't totally new to me, but what was were all the devices, right, that we had to have set up. And, you know, you're doing, like, normally when you're doing a film thing, you, like, do a quick sound check, you do a quick film take, and then that's that. But this was, like, you had to check each and every single device you had. 
and um, and I found it exhausting. <laughs> and when you go to re to to record, you're like, all right, here's the take. You're sort of like, all right, I have to just uh, try and get myself into a kind of zone because I can't play off of an audience. I can't play off of mm. like the the relationship with the person. So like Bo was saying, that trust was so important to um, to be able to like just take a step back and, and, and get yourself lost in the work and just listen to Bo's voice and trust that Gary and Nick are going to give you the right feedback, which obviously they did, you know, and, um, and then, and then you just send those takes away and you're like, I'm letting go control now, <laughs> you know, that's a really significant difference too, because when you're actually performing, you do have control over your performance mm -hmm. um, and what you're conveying. So. Mm -hmm. And with those tech aspects too, I mean, you had to do that, right? Like often, you know, when you're performing live, you have, you have some crew, you have some help, you know, some, some people to, to help with those. So yeah, that would be really, really intimidating and distracting. Like, so how do you like maintain focus? And, you know, I assume, did you like get it all set up and then kind of try and force it out of your mind type of thing or how'd that work? Well, I mean, I had a really big helper in my partner. <laughs> I was like, your job is to just press go and then be really, really quiet. And I had my setup in a way where he couldn't escape the corner of the room he was in. So he just said, okay, hold on. Let me grab my phone so I can at least read something. Because each take, we went all the way through, right? Because we have to feel the journey of the piece together. Right. So it was just like, you have to be quiet, not move, not make a peep, not make a sound for like 15 minutes until this is done, you know? Oh, and keep an eye on me because I'm going to signal to you when it's done. <laughs> Yeah, I totally pulled in a favor. I totally called in favors for it because there was no way, you know. And then, and then, like, I would have it set up, and then the the video camera would fall over, you know, because it was like, <laughs> and it was just like, oh. was like, like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then, of course, like, there was one full take where I forgot to turn the sound off on the original video. So then, of course, that's picking up the Sam sound, you know. And then Nick, and halfway through, I realize it, of course, you know, like things. Yeah, yeah, I'm not cut out for that at all. Well, I, I think you all did a miraculous job. Right. I, and Gary, like, what are your thoughts just uh, about this? What have you learned about cross-disciplinary kind of collaboration, you know, via technology? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, um, I, I think uh, as long as you have talented people <laughs> in the room, <laughs> yeah, you, like, because always something is going to fall like fall things so the technical thing was a bit of an issue but you have really talented performers you got yeah okay whatever however bad technical things are going to get <laughs> i'm going to get a good performance out of it and so you know bo was like swearing up a storm sometimes ah! you know like okay because ben bo specifically is used to being her body in space in a room and she has she knows which where to point her head to get the best sound of the room and all that kind of stuff and now this is a recorder that she has no idea what it's doing and so those right. kinds of things nick was going to give them the room so nick actually added the room sound in the processing of it so because the rooms we, we want a fairly deadish room and then nick added some volume and space to the room so that's why the rooms sound fuller because nick gave them the room that pen would have and bo would have found on their own he gave them that room which is again you need a really talented uh, musician who knows how to not only take their recordings but uh, to build on what they did and not make his own piece so nick did not create his own work he they, the three of them collaborated and on, on a unified piece, which is great that when we had the three of them in the room playing, it was just that cycle. And the thing we really did miss was Nick's uh, um, input live because uh, we just could not do that. So previously when we were rehearsing, Nick was live uh, uh, folding in their sounds. And so all of a sudden, Pan would be singing, Bo would be singing, and then their, their echo of their voice would come in and they would start playing not only with each other, but with their, their own voice back and forth. And so there's just sometimes beautiful duet with Pam and Bo doing a duet with their own voices because Nick is adding that into the loop. So all those complex, beautiful things going, we're going to lose that. But Nick then knew that and felt that and said, I'm going to do that. So he started doing that in the, uh, in the, the video. You, haul, you saw him looping in and playing 
themselves with themselves. Um, I, can't, I can't even believe that that was just your voices, right? Like it, it's so spectacular. Yeah. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, it's miraculous. He's just uh, yeah. terrific, yeah. I'll show you, I, I got, I'll give you an example. Like this is the first thing that scared us. We said, well, what's the lag like, right? So let's do the clap, because for us, this will not like seem stupid. For each one individually, I'll go one, two, three, clap, and we'll look like we're all doing it at the same time, but everybody else will theoretically get it Ooh, very different. Should we do it right now, just like yeah. as a demonstration? Yeah, so I'll do it, and it, it, I'll do okay. it. I'll say one, two, three, and clap, and okay. then you, okay, you do it, and everybody will be weird. Okay, I'll, I'll be the leader. Okay, and I, uh, so I'll go one, two, three, and then clap, so on the four. Okay. One, two, three, clap. Yeah. Doesn't work at all. Doesn't work at all. And that's like only like a minuscule taste of what yes. you were like up against in yeah. terms of putting this piece together. Yeah. Oh, so they, if amazing. they're playing, they were thinking both, if they did the thing together, they were not playing off the same note because you're hearing one note, she's hearing another. You think you're doing this, but you're really two seconds behind. And so that's why that, that rehearsal beforehand was made sense. And that's why they, they had to really anchor into feeling the larger playing with each other rather than a smaller playing with each other, which again, Nick gave us. Nick gave us the stitching together of what we were normally doing with a small playing with each other. Nick brought that back in that wasn't there originally because the lag. So that's again, uh, the, the group uh, impetus to everything. Amazing. Well, I'm just looking to see if we have any uh, last chance there, our audience, if you have any questions that you, burning desires that you would like to know from our guests this evening. Uh, please uh, go ahead and put those in the chat feature um, and we will uh, answer them. Any last comments or things, you know, while we're just waiting to see if we have any last questions. I haven't seen any. Lots of uh, compliments. Uh, round of applause I see here and um, I, uh, there's one comment. Nick's soundscape was imperceptible mostly and the uh, oh then rose out of the voices. Yes, absolutely, that's what yeah. we were talking about. Yeah. And uh, somebody joined us from the UK oh, there and you go. had to uh, jet off, but, um, oh, was it coarse sand that made such a sound? It's, it was play sand, it's play sand falling on paper. And that was, that's why it sounded so light. It's not really, it's pretty, pretty, pretty light play sand, but because it was on paper, it, it had that, uh, had that oh, rough sound yeah yeah i was surprised how loud it came out and part of it was because it came from my camera which was far away so it had the bit of the room we weren't intending to use it but nick loved that so i gave nick the sand sound and he added that at the, at the beginning yeah. when i also noticed i was glad you kind of gave us primed us to watch for the light changing too like at near the end there when the yeah. light changes and you're like yeah um, we had another comment, uh, imagine if the sand sculpture became sandstone, frozen in time with all its delicacy. Mm. That yeah, actually that's, that is something I'm looking into is to getting some, there's a, some, like a sand cement that I can then make the sculpture and then slowly oh. spray water on it and make a sculpture. Yeah, that's, that's my next. That a, um, oh, that's, that would be very cool. Yeah. Or that, um, the, uh, yeah. I was gonna say the the magic sand, but that wouldn't yeah. work. Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> Magical performance. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. in here. So well done, yeah, everyone. Cool. Uh, another comment here. There's something really interesting apart from latency issues about time. The visual is a perfect image of the past, but the sound seems on first hearing only the present, lasting for an instant, mm. and then being forgotten. Mm. Did the past fall away for the singers? and maybe for Nick. Mm. What do you think, hey, Pam, Bo, one of you wanna tackle that? Did the past fall away for you? Oh, wow, that's a very uh, loaded question at this time. <laughs> 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 like my brain just went to life basically, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I feel like part of the purpose of this being like a, structured like this was built to be a structured improv experience is that it is it is a different performance every time and it's not just in the nuances but in the actual sounds and the structures and the relationships that you see and so it is it is it is a really beautiful metaphor right because um when you think about like for me it was like 
when I think about the universe and we're creating this piece that for Bo and I had this real trajectory of life and death, a person's life is so minuscule, right? In like the concept of the time of the universe or even the time of this earth. And so there was something we were kind of, I think, playing with and in, in, in building about that kind of that micro versus the really, really macro. And I think that when Bo and I were also performing this sort of ritual at the end with the sand itself, we were kind of breaking the sand apart. So it looked, it looked like even more micro kind of burial grounds, but looked like this community or could look like planets or could look like space. Mm. Bo, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think um, some of the elements in the in the vocal improv though um, we revisit it in different ways throughout the trajectory, and uh, and certainly in the final scene where we were cleaning it up, um, there were there were echoes of what had happened, and so so that sense of of the present and the future is built on what has come before is very present for me in in the whole thing and. And the way that the, the sculpture itself gets built, how the sand itself falls and falls down and, and builds on top of what has come before. Um, so this, and, and of course the archetypal uh, association of sand with, with, with time passing and all of that. So I, I think it's a very loaded question. Of course, it's from Gary. Um, hi, thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but yeah, I think sonically uh, um, um, it, it built on it. As, as the sand sculpture built on it as well. Excellent. Well, I've got one more, I've got another question here. Uh, fascinating watching the pendulum pattern. Well done, everyone. I was wondering, do you think it is possible for the vibration of the live singing voices to move the pendulum? What do you think, Gary? I, yeah, well, um, actually, everything does, yes. <laughs> so for sure, that vibration adds into uh, the, because it's so, because of the pendulum, once someone's moving, anything in the room, like the atmosphere in the room changes, it, their bodies actually in the room add, add, added moisture, so a thicker room would slow it down and change it again. All of those things become minusculely, but part of it. Uh, but the biggest thing was uh, when we did the live performance, it's actually a uh, Pam or Bo, one of them would actually start the pendulum. And so their impetus of starting would also be part of that. So yeah, I think so. On another note also, uh, in the bigger version of it that we are looking at doing, uh, there's also a point where there's um, structures that you can build that would vibrate to sound with sand on it. And that would be something else you would see on the side of it. There are other things that their voices would sing in the, the uh, drums, basic drums with sand, and you would see the shape of their voices as well which was another thing we were looking at doing. Had gotten all of it right. <laughs> in a live performance, but we got, we got so most of it, which is great. So we got, this is the core of it, but if we got the larger project, we would, we, it was a whole, yeah, the whole, whole bunch of things that were going to be happening. Uh, that, but, but yeah, the, 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 the fact that these, once you put a, something like a pendulum in an action, uh, there's so many, there are, there are the action of the person putting in the gravity, you know, the air pressure, but also anything else in the room and the rotation of the earth. There's, all those things are doing it. And that pattern you saw, that, that, that's like a snowflake. No, it could never be repl replicated ever again. So right. you, that's, that's it. There's a sort of ratio that keeps it within that sort of structure, but not at all the same one. So sometimes we're long and then long delays, some are there and all of that changes. <clears throat> Isn't that incredible? Yeah. And uh, speaking of that structure, the, our last question this evening, um, is, you know, did you get a particular, particular feelings for Aztec structures or other historical architectures from the shapes created by the sand? And that wasn't the only comment we had. Uh, there was an earlier one that someone said, you know, ancient. Um, and uh, so I think in, um, it certainly brought that feeling um, for me. So, you know, do you, you, any of you want to comment on, on that at all? Well, actually, uh, what happened in one of the rehearsals that we set it up, it actually did create a pyramid. Like one of the shapes we had was was a pyramid. Like like wow, like there's a pyramid up, and it does echo this this one. But one of the, one of the incarnation was this thing that looked very square, very 
mounted up like a pyramid. And you realize, oh, all those ancient structures from are, are not just randomly yanked out of anywhere. They're, they're being experienced and seen and echoing what we see around us. So, um, and those things are, uh, that's a really thing of what you perceive as artists and, and as, as people you might see something moving and think, oh yeah, that's interesting. Somebody else will say, no, there's a pattern there. And, and, and even things like wind or something will create natural things. Like if you go wind, wind in a certain structure, they'll have these very beautiful structures that happen kind of uh, spontaneously, but they're all based on the physics of, of, of things like that. So yeah, so in that world, yeah, I definitely saw the Aztec thing and we all felt something in the same way of ritualistic spiritual kind of feeling uh, while it was happening. Yeah, Bo, you had a comment as well. Yeah, for me, it was more archetypal than a specific tradition or a specific identity. Um, that just that that sense of the the passing of time the, the association to to sand and that seems to be universal um and the the myths right it, it ties in with so many different kinds of myths um that it was it wasn't less specific to to an identity like that and more more on the bigger scale like pam was saying the macro mm -hmm. yeah and I'll just add that, you know, it, it's not total coincidence that this project came after the three of us went on tour to Egypt and Tunisia mm -hmm. uh, with the Empty Space Show. And we had that shared experience. And yes, we did go to see the pyramids and we got to know um, people from Tunisia and Egypt and, and we got to learn about the culture a little bit. So. Uh, you know, there was, there was a little bit of that inspiration. And, and for me too, um, the entire piece is actually also using, like I use vocables from an actual Hindu chant um, that is often said at ceremony. So um, towards the end, like it actually sounds like words because they are words. And uh, oftentimes it's like, you know, uh, the, I think the last the last word I keep repeating is swaha, swaha, swaha. And it's, it's uh, this action of like putting, putting an offering into fire. And so, and that, like, I remember as a kid, that offering always kind of looked like sand, <laughs> you know, like you're pouring sand into the fire or something. And so it kind of just evoked those images for me too. And we worked a lot with Gary and Nick on shaping this piece musically. And um, when I just, Whenever I seem to, to fall into the chant somehow, those were the moments that really seemed to work for Gary and Nick. So I think they were feeling something <laughs> there too. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing. And, and, and there was sand, actually we, we were collecting sand as we were on our trip. And so there was sand from the Sahara, there was sand from the pyramids. There was some sand from Tahir Square. Um, so, and, no and, and yeah, yeah. So there's, I'll put that in there of sand from around the world is in that sand as well. Yes. Uh, it is not amazing that people are feeling that. That's incredible. Okay. Well, um, I want to say a hearty thank you to all of you. Does anyone have any last comments or things they wanted to share before we say good night? Uh, yeah, one thing, the, the, we, the larger uh, pendulum piece that I had originally built, which was uh, to, to last an hour and a half long. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, with the two, the two Smiths in, in Waterloo uh, built that for us. And so there'll be an incarnation where uh, the two Smiths version of the pendulum piece, because that did not fit in my living room. No. Hmm. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see that. I hope, yeah. I hope as things, you know, become safe for us to do so we could, yeah. uh, you know, revisit that idea or see you maybe in an outdoor location or something, you know, where it's safe um, to see that pendulum because holy smoke, that must be something incredible as well. Well, thank you all, Gary, Pam, and Bo for uh, joining me tonight in conversation and for sharing this uh, fantastic work with us. And, and thank you everyone who is able to join us and uh, watch tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon and uh, certainly visit ideaexchange.org uh, in our program calendar there for lots more fun programs coming up soon. Thanks so much.
Good Take night. care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Bo, for playing with me. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Nick, whoever you are. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night.